kicking on my door and left me in my stately home, blazing on a sunny afternoon. And I can't sail my yacht, he's taking everything I got. All I got this sunny afternoon. Hi, how you doing? Justin here with another song from the Vintage Songbook. This one is Sunny Afternoon by The Kinks, of course, written by the all-time amazing legend Ray Davies. Fantastic song. Uh, really cool, fun one to play on the guitar too, because it's got some really unique kind of chord voicings in it. So uh, that's really the, the, the trick for this kind of song. I mean, the rhythm's kind of important as well, kind of keeping that rhythm really moving along. But most people are going to have fun with the chords. So let's get to a close-up and check out how to play them. The first chord we need to get under our fingers is a D minor chord. But what's important here is that I'm using my little finger on the third fret of the second string. First finger, of course, is the first fret of the first string. Second finger is going down the second fret of the third string. So playing just the thinnest four strings gives us our D minor. The second chord in the sequence is D minor over C. So D minor slash C just meaning we're adding a C bass note. So if you now reach over with your third finger, and pop it down there on the third fret of the fifth string, what you're going to find is that that finger probably lies over and mutes the fourth string, which is good. You want that. So you'll end up with now, actually, it should probably, the tip of the finger should mute the, the sixth string as well. So we'll end up with a muted sixth string, the third fret, muted fourth string, then second fret, third fret, first fret. Okay, that would be a D minor with a C bass. Now we leave our first and fourth fingers there, move our second finger over to the second fret of the fifth string, and our third finger moves to the second, where the uh, second finger's just come off, so the second fret of the third string. Now we've got a D minor with a B bass note. So the D minor chord is still kind of the same dots, no matter what fingers we use for it, they're still being covered, but we've now moved this second finger over to the note B, and it, like the third finger was before, needs to mute the thicker string, and the underneath will mute the fourth string. So we've got nothing, second fret, nothing, second fret, third fret, first fret. Right, that's D minor with a B bass. Now we've got another interesting chord, which is D minor with a B flat bass. Now what this one, the kind of the weird thing about this one is you've got to use what's called a bridging bar. So my finger, a normal bar chord, I'd try and keep my finger quite flat, but for this sort of one, really what I want is I want to mute the thicker string, play the fifth string, first fret, and mute the fourth string. That's what I'm really concerned with. And the underneath tip of my, the kind of the, the uh, I don't know what it is, the underneath part of my first finger is also pressing down on the thinner string. The rest of the strings are underneath are muted. Well, actually, it appears the third string's not properly muted, but it doesn't matter because we've got these two fingers down where we had them before. So this one we've got now mute, first, mute, second fret, third fret with a little finger, and the first fret is the underneath of that first finger kind of, I call it a bridging bar, these kind of round bar shapes where you're just really trying to get two notes out of it and the middle ones aren't really very important. Particularly, actually, we really want to make sure that that D string is muted. That would be a D minor with a B flat bass. Okay, so that sequence, D minor, D minor with a C bass, D minor with a B bass, D minor with a B flat bass, and now we go to an A chord, just using a little bar, so we're not playing the thinner string or we're muting it, depending on, you know, either just don't play it or lift the kind of the first finger bar up enough to mute it a bit. Uh, then we want, that's an A chord. Then we want A with a G bass note. 
okay? Now the next chord, so it's just the second finger touching the third fret, muting the fifth string, A with G. Now the next chord, which is A with an F bass, I would normally play it by reaching over with my thumb to play the F, trying to mute the fifth string, may or may not happen depending on uh, how good I happen to grip it, and then I've got the A chord, but I know for many of you that's going to be difficult because it's awkward for me. So if that's from here going from the A to the G, you could also jump to this, it's a very weird sounding chord on its own, it's the, in context it's fine, using your first finger on the note F, the first fret of the thicker string, muting the fifth string, and using your third finger to play that little A chord, and then you've got A with an E bass, which is exactly the same as a regular A chord, but our bass note is the thickest E. So on that, the A section, we've got A, A with a G bass, A with an F bass, to A with an E bass. Okay, so right the way through that sequence now, D minor, D minor with a C bass, D minor with a B bass, D minor with a B flat bass, A, A with a G bass, A with an F bass, A with an E bass. So that's kind of the main sequence there that you need to be kind of getting to grips with. Okay, so let's have a walk through the different sections now and talk about the way that we're using these chords. So the intro is exactly those chords that we've just been looking at in that order. So we have D minor, D minor with a C bass, with a B bass, with a B flat bass, to the A chord, with a G bass, with the F bass, to the E bass. And it does that again. So one more time, D minor, with a C bass, with a B bass, with a B flat bass, to the A, with a G bass, with an F bass, with an E bass. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit more about playing the rhythm back in a wide in a minute. So let's just get the chords down first. So that's the intro. Now the verses. We're starting off with a D minor for a whole bar. To C my toe, to F me in my C7 hole. Most of you, I'm hoping, know the C7, so just regular C, little finger down there uh, on the third fret of the third string. And then to listen on a sunny afternoon. So that was just that rundown like we had in the intro. A to A with a G bass to A with an F bass to A with an E bass to D minor. And I can see my yard. He's effing every C7 I got. A to with a G bass, with an F bass, with an E bass, to D minor for two bars. Okay, that would be the verse. Now, just a little note here, at the very end of the verse, you've got two bars of D minor. If you want to, a nice way of kind of working into the bridge is to use a little octave thing. So you have D minor, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so... After the second bar of D minor, first drum will be on the D minor chord. And if you've learnt your octaves, you can use octaves of A, which is just the fifth, uh, fifth string open, second fret on the third string, B octave, C sharp octave. If you want to, you know, if you're not sure about how to do that, check out the lesson on on my website. But uh, you don't have to do that. It's just a nice little run. Sunny afternoon. And it leads us nicely into this bridge. Now, the chords for the bridge are this. D7, D7, D7 from this G7. It's two bars of that. I got a C7, mama, trying to break F to A7. Okay, that's the bridge chords. Now, the first chord, D7, I much prefer the sound of playing it up here which is exactly the same as the C7 that we looked at earlier, the one open position one, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that C7 chord. But if you move it up two frets, make sure the outside two strings are both muted, right? So the tip of your third finger should be muting the thicker string and the underneath of your first finger should be muting just under there, muting the thinner string. 
Now, the, the cool thing about this is you can get a real good kind of groove on with the rhythm by pressing the chord down, and as you lift the chord up, the sound stops, which is really good for getting this kind of... Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can... But, you know, it's harder to get that rhythm. So I think it does sound better. Save me, save me, save me from this squeeze. Now, the same with the G7. You know, you can definitely do the open chord version of G7, but those of you that have done your bar chords, go to a regular G bar chord, lift off your little finger. There's your G7. Then we got to the C7, and one at the end, one bar of F, one bar of A7. So that one more, one more time. Two, three. Save me, save me, save me from this squeeze. I got a C7 mama trying to break it to A7. Okay, so now we're into the chorus. We got D minor. I love to live so G7 lee. D minor, this life of G7 to C7, F ing on an A7, after D minor to C bass. And then we're into that little rundown, okay? So the first part of the chorus, D minor for one bar, live so G7 lead. D minor, this life of G7 to C7. So just half a bar there of the G7 to the C7. F for a whole bar, A7 for a whole bar. Then we got two bars of that chord sequence, like the intro with the little bass note running down thing. Depending on which way you're going to time in summertime. Okay, now let's have a little bit of a chat about the rhythm here, because it's kind of a big deal in this tune, you know, it really kind of drives the song along. So the first thing that I think you need to learn is to be able to strum and then immediately mute with your uh, strumming hand. So you're going to use this kind of outside part of your palm there. After you've played a chord, you're going to just kind of curve it around so it touches on all of the strings. So you can strum, mute, strum, mute. And as usual, it's much easier to do it just on one chord rather than trying to, you know, learn a technique like this while you're worrying about all of the chord changes. Just get try and get used to it. Get used to it on that one chord. Do it a bit slower so you can get used to the feeling of it. And then see if you can gradually speed it up, keeping it nice and clear. It's a very, very useful technique to be able to mute chords straight away like that. So, um, straight away the intro's got a nice vibe if you're doing that kind of rhythm. You could hear... You could add in some extra upstrokes as well and leave it open if you want. You know, it's up to you to kind of interpret it if you're playing it on your own. So, once we start with the verses, as There's an all sort of, you know, a whole range of different patterns you could use for that. If you're, uh, you know, if you're struggling with your rhythm guitar, you might just want to apply maybe Old Faithful, a down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. That'll sound good. The tax man's taken all my gold. You could be having that. I quite like. And it's important here to listen as well to the groove of it because it's not just dead straight this one. It's got like of a. heavy accent on two and four and a little bit of a shuffle feel there so have a listen to the original and try and cop that feeling as well you know that's kind of an important part of the groove uh, you don't have to it doesn't have to be exact especially if you're playing it by yourself like in this kind of a, an acoustic guitar environment you know where you're playing for your friends and having to sing along you know but uh, you got to make it feel good and, and, and getting the groove you know to feel good is an important thing and usually the best way to do that is listening to the original recording and trying to play along with it and try and absorb the feeling that way but uh, 
Anyway, so. Now, it, when you go, if you're going to go into this feel, it's really about getting that nice strong accent on two and four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. I just noticed as well, I'm I'm moving the bass note over. I didn't hadn't realised I was doing it before. I'm playing D7, and then moving my third finger over to the thicker string to play the A. So I'm getting like this bass note. I don't think that's on the original recording. It kind of, I don't think it sounds bad, so you might want to try that, but uh, just in case any of you have noticed and wondered why I hadn't mentioned it. So, uh, but anyway, the groove. Three, four, one, two, 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 three. Getting those nice accents. And one nice thing as well, if you go to those D7 chords like that and you keep it real nice and tight for that section, when you go to the chorus, if you start strumming again, it straight away gives a little bit of contrast, which is really nice to have that kind of nice tight feeling here, and then straight away into the... And then it's eventually going to go back into feeling again the quite stoppy thing so uh, you know uh, contrast can be a really nice thing especially between verses and choruses when you're playing you know uh, verses as I just said that's kind of funny that's like an extra verses um, so I think that's kind of it that's plenty enough verses for me uh, I hope you enjoy playing this song it's a great song great song Ray Davies is awesome anyway Hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.